Since the beginning of time, people have been trying to figure out ingenious ways to get from point A to point B. <laughs> it may never get quite that easy, but in Irving, we've got some pretty interesting ways to get around town, and we'll take a look at a few of them in this edition of Discover Irving. Let's get going. Walking's a good way. ahead of its time with the APT, Area Personal Transit, or as it's affectionately known, the People Mover. There are plans now to connect the People Mover to DART. So that's where we'll start today, on the DART Orange Line. Overall for the orange line here in Irving, we're looking at all the way to DFW Airport, talking about 14 miles of light rail track. But the actual orange line goes all the way up to Parker Road Station, which is in Plano. That's the end of the line during peak hour service. So if you're a commuter trying to get to work, you're coming from Plano, you need to get to downtown, you can hop on an orange line train that's going to Irving and it'll drop you off in downtown along the way. You have a trip planner on the website. You can actually show you where you're at. You can actually punch in uh, your address or uh, a location where you're at and it'll show you which bus or train is the easiest to take to from your location to your destination. One of the things that DART has done to make traveling on DART so nice is they've really paid attention to the aesthetic. I have the great privilege of talking with one of my professors, Dr. Lyle Novinsky from the University of Dallas, about his work in the University of Dallas station. So tell me how this all got started. Well, initially, uh, because there are federal funds involved, the DART stations had to have public art. And so committees that chose the public art for the stations found things that were probably proper for a museum, but didn't meet the expectations of people in the neighborhood. So one of the artists in town cooked up the idea that perhaps the station could be flavored by a local artist. DART embraced that idea. David Ehrlicher is responsible for the overall design of the DART rail stations through the DART Art and Design Program. In that program, we team up an artist, an architect, a landscape architect, and representatives from the neighborhood where that station is located, and they work together early on in the design process systematically to build consensus on what's important to that neighborhood and how what's important to that neighborhood is realized in the art and design of the station. Here uh, for the Irving 1 and Irving 2 line sections, uh, all of the artists, architects, and the representatives agreed that they wanted to have a certain Irving consistency, a certain look so that you know if you were at that station, you were in the Irving Las Colinas area. And so that manifests itself primarily in three ways. Number one, a use of, of uh, Texas limestone and Texas pink granite, in particular, this granite band at the edge of the station platform that has the name of each station prescribed in it. A second way that this was done is each station has as the primary field material uh, these blonde colored pavers, concrete pavers. And then finally, for the most dominant element of the station, the canopies, a galvanized material was used as the roof material for each of the stations. And building on those common elements, Lau Novinsky personalized the UD station to reflect the spirit of the University of Dallas campus. Our campus is hilly, and one of the ways that you can take care of the, the drainage and the levels is by rubble stone walls, mostly laid by student labor, by the way. So we, we imitated that here by putting in these wandering walls, and then we adopted or had the landscape architect use the same vegetation we have, uh, basically red oaks and uh, cedar elms, uh, things that are seasonal because the students are there for nine months and you need changing color uh, over the year. But it's Lyle Novinsky's artwork that provides the cornerstone for the station. Like many of my abstract paintings, which were done in uh, abstract patterns of, of stitched suede leather. Now, that doesn't work outdoors, but I use the same motif in these. What we're asked to do in the station is to put up things that reflect the environment, 
And as this is the university, we thought very fundamental ideas. And the most fundamental philosophic idea is to honor earth, air, fire, and water. They're made of um, cut out steel uh, with uh, powder coated paint on the outside, so they're very, very durable. And they're large enough that you can't miss them. So that it really feels like something exactly. that's organic to the community. So that's great. as this is the University of Dallas station, our constituency is just right across the freeway. Matter of fact, you can see our tower uh, from here. Yeah. So we chose to use the images that are already on our campus. The Neil Ford architecture with the zipper brick and uh, the long wall, the brick, the wandering stone walls and the kinds of vegetation that are already on our campus. So when you arrive at the University of Dallas Station, you have really arrived at the University of Dallas. Like the University of Dallas Station, design elements from the Irving Convention Center are reflected in that station as well. The columns are the signature feature for this station. And in fact, the artist Philip Shore, when he was working with the community here and the architect, he wanted to bring together not only the native Texas limestone, but the same copper material that's used on the Irving Convention Center. And just like a convention center brings people from different backgrounds together, that's exactly what's happening with these column materials. They're locking together to create a nice finish for our station. Well, I was very pleased that, um, as you know, they chose local artists, but down the line there are two more artists that belong to the University of Dallas uh, faculty. Um, Kim and Phil, uh, they have the two stations, and then the next stations after that are done by artists from uh, North Lake. So we have five artists in a row here that um, are part of the artistic community. It's very important to us that each station reflect the community that it's in, reflect what's important to that community, and then be welcomed by that community. The dark orange line is a great way to get around town, but if you're looking for something um, a little more romantic, how about a gondola adventure on Lake Carolyn and the Mandalay Canal? So beautiful to me. Can't you see? Yes, you're every. Gondola adventures, in my way of putting it, is a company of love. <laughs> we serenade you. We do the message in the bottle. We do the roses. We do the rose petals. You name it. Only thing we don't do is divorce parties. <laughs> <laughs> Derek Johnson is manager of Gondola Adventures, which provides the most romantic way to travel around Lake Carolyn. Each cruise is different and unique. Basically, we're located here in the canal part, which we call the Mandalay Canal, where we're located here right now, the most beautiful part of the city. Just like in Venice, there are a few traditions and rules to observe. Normally, it's customary that ladies, you know, when you open the door for ladies to get in the car, Normally, ladies get on first, but in this case, since we're in Italy, Irving, Texas, the man always gets on the boat first. The reason why is to make sure that the boat is secure. The second thing is that because they did not believe in PDA in Italy, whenever there's a bridge, the longer the bridge, the longer the kiss. If you'd like an Italian aria to go with your romantic moment, they can do that for you, but there's other kinds of music too. I'm the more lovable uh, gospel singer, R&B singer. We got some Italian singing, we got some country western. It's different flavors. Okay. Whoever your gun lives that day, guess what? That's what you're gonna get unless you request it. <laughs> if you like your boating adventures a little more active, Brooke Pratt visited Lake Carolyn's newest water attraction, the Pedal Boats. New boats are making their debut on Irving's Lake Carolyn, and they run on pedal power. I think it's awesome. It's always a great thing to add something to the city that can be fun for just a group of friends or family or just even by yourself because it's super peaceful out here. Irving residents of all ages came out for a free ride during the inaugural weekend of the newest water attraction in the city, catching some sun and exercise. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun and a lot of good exercise actually. It's yeah, good for legs. it's fun <laughs> as well as it's, you know, you're getting some workout, you're like sweating when you're out there. 
There are two different types of boats for you to choose from. This is the one-seater and there's also a three-seater. These aren't any old pedal boats though, they're state-of-the-art propel-driven boats, which makes it easier and smoother for you to pedal. The boats I know basically itself is just like riding a bicycle. Straight pedaling, no motorized boat, just straight pedaling. Good exercise, fun in the sun with the canopy or without the canopy. Have it your way. The pedal boats are owned and operated by the same company as the gondolas that are on the lake. We already have the gondolas here, so that is an attraction that appeals more to a date night or something romantic. But the pedal boats encompass more than just a romantic evening. Actually, I'm very excited. I've been here for almost a year and I was looking forward to like this kind of uh, thing. So this is very, very exciting, you know? Yeah, so, it's, it's like a good yeah, use of yeah. the lake. We would always talk about, you know, they could do more with this lake. You know, there wasn't much. Yeah. So whether you are with friends, with kids, with a date, or riding solo, you can now add pedal boats to your list of things to do here in Irving. From our restaurants to the gondolas to now the pedal boats to the largest equestrian sculpture in the world in Williams Square to all the public events we have at the convention center, it just adds to our list of different things that we have to offer for people that live here, visitors, and just um, our folks in neighboring cities. It's a great attraction, great flavor, you know, we love it. It's a great new addition. What more can we say? Good job. A moonlight boat trip on Lake Carolyn certainly is a great way to make a romantic memory. But if what you like is a little adventure, no better place to find that than on a Harley. Welcome to Eagle Rider, rent a Harley. Eagle Rider, we rent dreams. That's our tagline. We rent dream because um, I think most of us have some sort of dream to live free and be wild. We rent by the day, it's 24 hour period. Um, the requirements are you must have a motorcycle license, uh, it must be 21 years or older, and obviously you have to be able to pay for it, and there is a security deposit, uh, depending on whether you buy, purchase our insurance coverage or not, and that's it. And you have to be able to ride, you have to demonstrate uh, a capability to ride, uh, and we will help you out with that. Lots of gentlemen come in here, uh, they, had a, they had a motorcycle in their youth, and they come in here and they want to try it back out again. Generally, we, uh, for someone who's not, uh, who's not sure, we will actually walk them in here and go through the different bike models and show them and let them sit on the bikes until they're comfortable. Uh, it's not something that you're going to go in and see someone with a 20-year-old, you know, leaking oil, dripping and smoking out the back. These are the latest and greatest. Um, um, we know that people, when people come here to rent, they're looking, they're looking to rent a dream and not a smoking clunker that's going to break down three miles from here and walk halfway back to the store and, uh, and get a tow home. We yeah. do have the soft tail line, we have the touring line, uh, we have the Sportster, we have the Big Daddy, the uh, uh, Electric Light, we have Road King. We have a little of everything. We generally try to stock the bikes that people like to ride or are more popular. And if they're comfortable, we'll put them on whatever their dream is, which is going back to the thing we rent dreams, experience the dream. We have two major segments of population that rents from us. One, uh, what we call the weekend warriors, uh, people who have a passion for, to ride but they do not own one. Generally, we'll see them in here to rent for the weekend whether it is for a charity ride or they're out with their buddies for the ride or they might be in town visiting their friend who has a bike. The other segment is, believe it or not, we have lots and lots of uh, international tourists. Uh, I'm actually from Australia. From, from BC, Canada. <laughs> from Canada. They have the dream of riding somewhere in America in a Harley Davidson motorcycle and to have went in their hair. Today, unfortunately, we have to stick to the highway for a bit. We're going to head down 183, we leave the highway, and then from there, it's secondary roads all the way down to uh, College Station, and then the next day, we make our way down to Galveston and continue along the coast all the way to New Orleans. We came up to ride from here to Orlando. We're going up north to a place called Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and then we're coming across back to Dallas. American Dream is about freedom. A lot of our culture is encompassed around cars, automobile, transportation, you know, to be able to hit the open road, 
you know, to explore the, your individuality, the freedom, it, which is what motorcycle, Harley-Davidson motorcycle is all about. The two things are synonymous, Harley-Davidson and America. So that's why we come here. This is the best place to ride. The, the, the roads are great, the country's bike friendly, facilities are good, everything works. We love it, yeah. We like going to the smaller towns. Uh, it just seems to be, you know, stay away from the cities, stay away from, you meet more interesting locals that way, have better experiences. Apparently, motorcycles are not just for the guys. We stop for tourist attractions and for our out of the way pubs. To be safe on the open road, you need to be prepared. You've got to have the correct gear, you know, helmet, leather jacket. Uh, these jeans have got Kevlar lining in them, so it's a bit more abrasion proof. Uh, good set of boots, gloves. So once you've got that, then it's, there's not much else you need. You know, you can live, live out of one t-shirt for a week if you have to. Uh, and a credit card. You need a credit card and you're done. <laughs> well, you pack kind of light. You um, make sure you use a washing machine at every stop you make. And I pack all my stuff in the large container. My husband gets one side container and I get my shopping in the other. We just have such friendly people, especially if you pull up in a Harley Davidson motorcycle. You know, I mean, it's an instant conversation opener. Somebody always has something to talk about. Whether, you know, if you have, you know, if you run out of gas or, you know, God forbid you, you run over a nail, you get a flat tire on the side of the road, someone will stop to help you. It just brings out the American dream in all of us. Folks, you can get around town on a dart train, you can have yourself a romantic gondola adventure, or you can come over and see John and rent yourself a Harley and get out there on the open road. Hope you had a great time. I know I did. We'll see you on the next edition of Discover Irving. Discover Irving.